Welcome back to AJ Kitchen Paper. I'm Asset. This is Oats. Let's make some Oreo Doreaki. Let's go. So let's get started by opening up a sleeve or two of these Oreos. There are about 10 Oreos in each sleeve. So first things first, we're going to separate the icing from the cookie. So just an Oreo. First you twist it, then you lick it, then you dunk it. Okay, so don't lick the icing. So just pry it open and then scrape out the icing with a spoon. I mean, you don't have to worry about getting it perfect. It's essentially just sugar anyway, that icing. But what we do want is that very dark, deep Oreo tone. We probably don't need any more sugar than we actually have in this. So, have a good crack until you're about one sleeve deep. But it's too late to turn back now, boys, so... Power on ahead with that one. Excellent. Took a little over 10 minutes, but well worth it. So everybody into a freezer bag. And once everybody is safely and soundly in there, we're going to seal it up, making sure there's no air in it at all. Then grab your fail it rolling pin or empty wine bottle if you're an Elko, and then make it into a fine crumbly powder. And that's the base of your dorayaki done. Now into a medium sized mixing bowl, add all of your crumbly bumblers in there. Now let's make the batter. So, two tablespoons of sugar, a slightly inaccurate quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder, one beautiful ego, and about 100 mils of milk, and then a nice whiskity whisk to combine. Because of the nature of Oreos, it won't go completely smooth, but do your very best. Alrighty, last thing to prepare. We're going to be making matcha whipped cream. No point in wasting that filling, so add it in, along with four tablespoons of sugar, and one teaspoon of matcha powder. Just a small aside, I was told off the other day, green tea does not equal matcha, by the way, everybody. And lastly, but not least, 180 mils of whipped cream. Mind you, you'll end up with a lot of leftover, but that's not really a problem, is it now? Mom says chocolate is good for that. And too much whipped cream is not good for you either, but here we are, inviting death to our doorstep. I think I found the real death. We will both come for you while you sleep. But anyway, if you just keep mixing this by hand, maybe you can burn off some of those calories. Once you got some stiff peaks, it is time to move over to the flame. So, in a warm fry pan, do not put any oil down or butter down. Just put your pancake doriaki mix right in the center. Make sure you do this with a small spoon to make this as neat and round as possible. And now because this is made out of Oreos and it's very dark, you won't be able to see very well how many bubbles there are. So just check the bottom is solid enough for you and then just flip it over. Get in that good flippity flip action and leave it on that other side for 30 seconds or so. Now that your thin pancake is cooked through, let's do that about mm, eight more times. Again, trying to keep them all uniform, very important. If you don't trust your eye to do the work, you can always grab one of those metal rings that you cook eggs in. Alrighty, Ruthie, now that everybody's done, pop them on a plate and let's start making our daughter our game. Now then, for an extra layer of sweetness, let's pop out our uncle, also known as Sweet Red Beans. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to stick these boys together? Because I am! On one pancake, add on your matcha whipped cream and then just spread out luxuriously. Lovely. Make sure you go right to the edges, guys. And don't be afraid to absolutely dollop this on. Now then, in the middle of that, dollop in a nice block of Angkor. And then using a second pancake, let's place it on top and squish it together. Make sure that you push down that Angkor right in the center so it spreads out for you. Alrighty, Dunsky Runsky, let's do that a few more times, shall we? This is definitely one of the funner parts of the recipe, so if you've got kids, this is a great time to get them involved. With our beautiful dorayaki complete, let's get a nice cross section of that. That little humpty bump of Angkor is exactly what you're looking for. And these contrasting colours, I can't get enough of them. Certainly a little pretty baby, isn't she? Now to go along with our matcha dorayaki, let's make a matcha latte. I suppose technically if the milk is going first, it's a latte macchiato. But let's not get caught up in semantics, this is a cooking show after all. Now I'm not going to lie, this is the first time that Oats actually did this and look at it, it's moving! What on earth? Now then once it's calmed down a bit, 
Sprinkle on some mantra on the top. And done. Look at that. Not bad if I don't say so myself and I had nothing to do with it. Alrighty, I think it's time for a taste test and some tips. So dorayaki are very similar to pancakes. And I did mention it earlier, but I'll just reiterate it again. When you're making pancakes or dorayaki, don't put any oil into the pan. It'll just make your pancake and your dorayaki a little bit sad and floppy. Now these aren't as sweet as you might first think. Oreos themselves aren't that sweet and matcha is really bitter. So if you're into that not too sweet dessert, this is perfect for you. Feel free to describe for daily recipes, hit the like button and comment down below if you had a go. Till next time guys!